Hello and welcome to Forex Focus, the UBP FX podcast. I'm Peter Kinsella and I'm the Global Head of FX Strategy at UBP. Today I'm going to look at the dollar and the outlook for the coming year. Before we start, it's worth making a few points about the dollar. The first point is that the dollar is unlike any other currency in the world. Just under two-thirds of global foreign exchange reserves are held in the dollar, and the dollar is involved in over 80% of all foreign exchange transactions. What this means is that when the dollar appreciates or depreciates in a material manner, it is important consequences for all of the other major currencies in the world. To make an analogy, the dollar is a bit like an oil super tanker. When it moves, it displaces a lot of water. The dollar has been in the bull market since 2014. The catalyst for that bull market was the ECB's decision in June of that year to impose negative deposit rates on the Eurozone banking system, effectively penalising European deposit holding institutions. These depositors subsequently moved their deposits to the dollar where they were able to earn decent returns, which increased as the US Federal Reserve raised interest rates in the subsequent years. The dollar also benefited from these capital inflows and from higher Federal Reserve interest rates. In a sense, the dollar was propelled higher both by the push of negative deposit rates elsewhere and by the pull of higher Fed interest rates. The US equity market also had performed during this period, and this led to increasing capital inflows, which benefited the dollar. However, all good things come to an end, and this is also the case with the dollar bull market. First, the dollar's interest rate advantage collapsed earlier this year when the Fed was forced to cut rates to 0% as a pandemic affected the US economy. The large decline in interest rates was also seen at the long end of the US yield curve. US 10-year bond yields fell to levels of around 0.5%, which shows that the dollar has lost a permanent interest rate advantage. This has never happened before, and is a really big deal for bond and foreign exchange markets. The Fed also established an FX swap program with a number of advanced and emerging market central banks. And this led to a decline in demand for the dollar, as corporates were able to access cheap dollar liquidity from local central banks rather than having to go into the market. Additionally, the huge increase in the US budget deficit to levels of around 16% of GDP is set to widen the US current account deficit over the course of 2021. The US now has a negative net national savings rate, meaning that further borrowing will have to be financed from abroad. Larger capital inflows are always offset by larger current account deficit. Typically, a rapid widening of a current account deficit leads to significant currency depreciation. This is compounded by the fact that the dollar trades at elevated levels, both in a real effective exchange rate and trade weighted terms. These are standard valuation measures for currencies. The question then is what type of dollar weakness we should expect. It's worth pointing out that the dollar has different trading regimes. Typically, the dollar tends to appreciate when the US economy enjoys a growth premium above the rest of the world's other major economies, as was the case for most of the period between 2014 and 2020. The dollar also appreciates very sharply during periods of extreme risk aversion, as was, the, as was the case during the 2008 and 9 global financial crisis, and in March of this year during the height of the pandemic. The dollar tends to sell off in the aftermath of US and global recessions. In particular, we find that the dollar tends to decline as a global economy recovers. Intuitively, this makes sense, because investors no longer need the security of the dollar as a safe haven asset. The corollary of this is that currencies that are highly sensitive to global economic growth should tend to outperform. The recent vaccine announcements are a game changer for markets and for the dollar, because a rapid rollout of vaccines around the world in the first quarter of 2021 means that global economic growth will benefit substantially and mobility will increase. Consequently, we think that the dollar is set to weaken as global growth improves. In this context, we expect that the dollar should weaken materially against the likes of the Australian dollar, the Canadian dollar and the Chinese renminbi. The Australian dollar will benefit from the Asian economic rebound, while the Canadian dollar will benefit from the increase in oil prices and the global economic recovery. The Chinese renminbi will benefit from its higher yield profile, especially at the long end of its yield curve. Chinese 10-year bond yields trade at levels above 3%, while US equivalents trade at levels of around 0.8%. So investors will benefit from a substantial yield pickup. 
Investors have already noticed this issue, and we've seen monthly capital inflows towards China increase from $50 billion per month at the start of 2020 to current levels of around $150 billion. Recent political developments in the US and elsewhere will be conducive to dollar weakness. The appointment of former Fed Governor Janet Yellen to run the US Treasury is a case in point. In 2016, Yellen decided to postpone a Fed rate hike because of the potentially deleterious effect that would have on emerging markets. This shows that Yellen will pursue a more multilateral approach than the previous administration, which is no bad thing. The Biden administration is unlikely to initiate trade wars with the European Union. A trade war between the EU and the US would act as a break on euro appreciation. The Biden administration is unlikely to take a drastically different policy regarding relations with China, but at a minimum, we expect the rhetoric of the former administration to ease. All told, there are strong reasons to expect a sustained period of dollar weakness. The question is by how much we can expect the dollar to weaken. When we've previously seen a combination of overvaluation and rapidly deteriorating external balances, the dollar subsequently declined by around 30% on a trade-weighted basis. This would put your dollar well above levels of around 140 and dollar yen would trade at levels below 90. The bottom line is that the old regime of a strong dollar has come to an end and investors should begin to hedge for a substantial depreciation of the dollar over the coming years. Thanks for listening. 